Hello everyone, this is Food is a Conversation Alumni Edition, session 65, <laughs> sorry. So what are these sessions about? Uh, besides me always saying this wonderful sentence, I think my tone of voice became the same by now. Um, we are introducing our ecosystem members, those who attended any of the educational programs organized by the Future Food Institute. Um, let it be the Food Innovation Master Program I attended in 2018, for example, or any of the summer schools, or now the Food and Climate Shaper boot camps, what are happening both in digital and in-person format. Actually, one of them is currently running, so I will have a new batch of uh, Climate Shapers to interview in the future so and believe me we have um we have a lot of people introduce you because their stories are inspiring and also coming from all over the world and they will talk about their specific food system issues and uh hi gaston hello hi Good i think it's an nice intro um, so it will be a very casual conversation around 20, 30 minutes. Uh, if I encourage everyone, if you have questions, please feel free to post it in the chat. We will make sure that we can accommodate them, but otherwise don't worry. I prepared already questions, so we won't stay quiet. There won't be awkward silence here. And, um, if you don't have the time to uh, stay with us the entire time, no problem. The um, conversation will be posted on our IGTV and tomorrow also on our YouTube channel. And so you can watch all the 65. Um, sessions what we hosted so far with very inspiring stories and and um, inspirations just watch it it's better than Netflix I can my confidently say that now <laughs> all right uh, without me taking too much time uh, I would like to introduce you um, to one of our climate shapers who graduated uh, last December from the digital boot camp. So Gaston, please tell us where you are dialing in from and how did you end up on the boot camp uh, last, last year in the winter? <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity, Julia. Well, I'm dialing in from Porto Alegre, down south of Brazil. And I was looking for inspiration and I'm so glad that I found it on, on the digital boot camp. I was in the that, that time of the year that yours and what a year right the the, the pandemic and etc and i was looking for inspiration to a new project that we were starting to work um in our foundation and i found it on the on the boot camp i'm very happy to hear that so that leads us to my next question what were the main learnings? What were surprising uh, parts of the digital bootcamp? I don't know if you participated on any other digital learning experience before, but what were your main takeaways and uh, what did you enjoy the most? <laughs> uh, well, well, firstly, I, I, and I, I want to share this with other um, and maybe younger professionals than, than, than myself. Looking for new opportunities to learn will be a, a constant quest in your in your path in your career, right? So, I always um, searched for international experience at least one time in the year where I could go and learn something new. But of course, to network, right? And th that also was an opportunity to go to to Europe or the United States or other countries here in. In Latin America and was my first uh, digital experience uh, learning and, and but also connecting in, in this broad sense and it was great it, it, it I, my expectations were not high because it's you know it's always better to end up a, uh, a day of hard work and a lot of learning and provocation with uh, a glass of wine you know together and having fun but we also had that in the, uh, the Future Fuse Institute boot, the Digital Bootcamp. So at the end, it worked out. And, and what I thought it was the most interest, interesting thing for me was to, to, to get to know people in Singapore, in India, and understand that we have similar uh, challenges in, in the south of the world. And also that was an opportunity to to exchange knowledge with colleagues from places that uh, in, in Italy or in Belgium that are that have a, a view that is very different, and, and we can learn from that differences. So, so that was the 
for me the the highlight of the process it, it's it's very transversal to the whole program but it's it's a great thing in my opinion yeah you are already <clears throat> so i would say you have experience in innovation um how did you find the the lectures around ecosystemic thinking and prosperity thinking and also the final activity with the hackathon how do you think that added to your learning journey or also to the the complete picture i think what added the most um on this systemic view and and in the complex in the complexity was the the applying the, the, those kind of methodologies to food system specifically mm -hmm. and th that's as you mentioned i have experience in 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 rural development in in, in inclusive innovation But for me, it was very interesting to learn and to have tools to do that in the food uh, system setting, you know. So, which is, uh, I would say, the, 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 where, where complexity uh, emerges the most and, and where the, 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 the whole nexus, uh, food, energy, water gets truly raw, truly complicated. And so it was very interesting to, to, to learn how to navigate uh, this system. And the hackathon was um, a, a, a very, very small but intense experience where we could apply those, such knowledges. And, and, it is, and it's crazy because you have your life outside the hackathon at the same time but uh, it's like a force that drags you to, to think and to co-create with people that are very far from you, that have very different experience. So it was very interesting uh, to me. And, and also that feeling that in, in the daily basis, I have to defend projects, you know, <laughs> I have to talk with funders or with small holders and um, the, the, Anxiety is not a good translation, but the, the butterflies in the stomach when, when you get to, to present your solution were there. So it was very nice to, to reconnect with that feeling and also to see amazing talent from a lot of different parts of the world. People that are just amazing, right? And, and also this, this generation thing, it's, It's interesting the boot camp, you know. I, I'm the, my approaching my mid 30s, but uh, I learned a lot with the people in their early 20s, just uh, getting out of um, uh, undergrad undergrad studies, but also learned a lot from people from their 40s or 50s that have seen a lot of those movements, uh, such as we are seeing. Uh, nowadays in the, the food systems, you know, so it was a very, very cool experience. Nice. I'm very happy to hear that. So you mentioned that um, on a daily basis, you are in touch with founders and with smallholder farmers because you have a project called World Transforming Technologies. And I would like to hear about this mission, what you have, where you want to use innovation as a tool to find solutions for like global issues, maybe on a local level in Brazil, but um, yeah, please share a bit about uh, the project and also what exactly does that mean in your daily life? <laughs> cool. So, so uh, World Transforming Technologies is an NGO that was born in 2013. It was kind of a, a, a younger sister or a spin-off or you know, an arm of open innovation for uh, Fundación Avina, which is a foundation with more than 25 years of experience working in Latin America, working in themes such as access to water, uh, political innovation, climate action, and a, a number of those. And, and of course, they changed it along those 25 years, but it was born with the... The identification, the identification of the challenge that for the complexity of the problems that we are facing in, in our century, uh, technology and deep innovation should uh, act also to generate uh, social and environmental impact, you know. 
when we when we talk about disruption that it nowadays is a very cliche word even uh, in the early 2010 the the application of this word and the context was to think about how the impact uh, in the business would be right the digitalization etc nowadays it's it's very common to to think about that in different areas and aspects of our lives but there Uh, the, 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 in the foundation of world transforming technologies, we saw that the only chance that we could provide social and environmental justice was if the technology and this development of the innovative solutions were aiming at social and environmental impact. You know, it's it's not a externality or it's not a, a social responsibility project that will address those kind of complex issues. So we were born like that. And I joined the, the foundation after experience in as a social entrepreneur in the rural development and access to energy setting, working in uh, sub-Saharan Africa and different countries of Latin America. And for me, it was great because now when I, when I joined the World Transforming Technologies, Uh, now it can be agnostic technology-wise, you know. It's it's about the problem that we want to solve, not about the model or the technology that we want to mm -hmm. to to push, you know. So uh, in World Transforming Technologies, we work with different sets of projects and methodologies, but always starting from problems that pe uh, people uh, face day day in a daily basis. So. We work in uh, community water management in the rural settings in Brazil, but also in other countries of Latin America. We support municipalities in, in the resilient cities spaces. So there's a lot of uh, circular economy projects like open calls for innovation, but also uh, directed process in which we match this this science uh, and innovation and social impact with local community-based organizations that face those those challenges in the daily basis so it's it's fun i don't get bored but it's <laughs> tough and what and also coming back to why i, I joined the, the digital boot camp is because i needed more references to work in a space that we already did we worked for two years with community in the semi-arid region in Brazil that work in, in consortiums uh, from uh, agroecology consortiums working with cotton, with organic cotton, and was a very nice experience. But now we are launching a, from a new initiative that we have that is called the Innovation Orchestration Center that will work with this logic of mission-oriented innovation. You know, there's an Italian economist called uh, Mariano Mazzucato that uh, works in the UCL in London. And the, the general idea is that innovation works because of intentionality on investment and institutional structure uh, from the state. With the, and this is usually applied to building new mis missiles or, or, or getting uh, people to the moon, to Mars, you know, that, that this is the kind of mission. We thought, what about we get that logic that makes a lot of sense and apply it to challenges from people that are facing the climate change or uh, water scarcity, or that their their way of life it's ending because there is this when we say about uh, 4.0 agriculture or innovation in agriculture in Brazil you close your eyes and you see drones and machines uh, and and other IoT solutions etc but in large scale production so there there is almost no people in that landscape And we want to change that with, with this new project. So I needed references, and I found them in the boot camp. So that was nice. Amazing. So is this um, the project what you're running on regenerative agriculture? Yes, yes. Okay. So the, the, the way we frame it, it's, and it's, we, 
we had a, a huge uh, discussions on, on how framed this, on the, the given the name, right? Because it's important. And we see the, the widespread use of regenerative, regenerative agriculture uh, now or like it seems like two weeks ago it was climate smart agriculture, you know, and the people get tweaked. And in Brazil, there's a, a very strong and political movement that is attached to agroecology that have pretty much similar um, uh, principles, right? To fixating carbon on soil, to, to taking care of your soil, but also uh, getting... So, so we understand that those changes on, on, on the naming of those ways of doing agriculture, they are also political. And, and that's the thing in innovation as well, you know. Uh, it's tough to go to those networks of organizations that work with agroecology in Brazil that have to be very tough to defend their way of life. And, and the smallholder, there are um, um, almost uh, 5 million of those kind of um, settings with in Brazil we call familiar agriculture, agricultura familiar, which changes. Brazil is huge, but uh, to defend this, this way of life and this kind of production, they have to be very political on, on, on that. So setting those principles, etc. And one of the dichotomy, I don't know if this is even a word, the like um, the money case, money case? mechanism, no. yes. No, 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 no. no. It's, it's like a polarity. The, it, it, the polarity between what innovation and agroecology, you know, it's like uh -huh. an opposite thing. You cannot uh, join them and, and think about innovation in those politicized networks. So uh, this is one of the challenges that we have, you know, how to bring and to talk about innovation. And this is not uh, usually or, or not uh, only thinking about uh, agriculture 4.0 standards or technologies within this context. It's also looking at traditional knowledge that could be added to science. So we could foster methodology such uh, biofertilizers working with uh, very specific um, uh, social biodiversity uh, elements, you know. So that is one of the challenges that we'll have. But we, I'm, I'm not, um, I, I, I'm going to give a spoiler. We're signing an MOU to to be the 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 knowledge partner for a very large world. Uh, um, international organization that works in Brazil. I almost said the name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, that's okay. <laughs> that's, Everyone should watch out for a press release soon. Uh, uh, yes, very soon. Uh, that um, will help us to to reach those 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 farmers, but also to give us the the political incentives that. Um, it's it's important in agriculture, right? Uh, working with development, it's it's every every time po politics are in the middle, right? But in food systems, this is key, and and it's not necessarily bad, right? So so having that uh, dimension uh, taken account, what we will do is that we we're now mapping challenges that in which. Uh, Science and technology-based solutions can be and an, an, can can have a match to map the scientists in Brazil that are already working in that space with that kind of solution and form extraordinary teams of scientists so so they can collaborate to access funding for uh, the innovations. There's a lot of in, in Brazil and I think in other countries from the south of the world, this, this is a, the, 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 the funding for innovation, for science and, and research, it's very widespread. So each researcher in his university gets a little bit of money to work on his or hers um, problem, a research problem, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's very pulverized. 
what we are we we aim with with uh, this project is to orchestrate them to take out this uh, science management aspect and let them just research do applied research with collaboration and access to funding for this collaboration so we can truly achieve the mission you know at the end of the day it's, it's about that it's the mission that the broad mission is to to bridge the gap the competitiveness gap that is with the monoculture large extension and that is already full of 4.0 agriculture how we can bridge this gap and also find other kind of solutions like such as the uh, managing the soil or even we are, we are looking even to uh the the the, the agro industry uh, phase of this uh, of this uh, food systems you know because it's it's very different when you talk about the technology that is that applies to the context of those small holders than to the others and and that is how you you break the the silos <laughs> it's it in, in this subject breaking the silos is Yeah, it definitely. sometimes is, it's even literal, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, um Brazil is a huge country and as you said it has um more commercial agriculture, so high, like big scale agriculture, but you then have all those small holders existing in the same country next to each other and you have all this biodiversity that you also have to protect in the same time. Do you have any other country what you can look at as um, as an example where they applied already something what can be um, a solution to be adapted to your local context so it's it within the difference in brazil you have this opportunities for cross learning and to and how to 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 foster the, the collaboration within the country we had we already have the set of of difference but when you we talk about interesting experience with mall holder you you directly think about uh, india of course and maybe colombia in our uh, sub region here but i'm very interesting and and i'm and amazon just uh, told me that the book will arrive now about china's experience that um it's lately a case for how to integrate small holders within large uh, commercial uh chains using technology right and and that also has an influence on on how the production is it's done so so it's i want to learn from them there it that seems there are very much interesting uh, reference in in that kind of work Uh, but of course when we go to the context it's there is a lot of changes right of course of how yeah. it should work yeah we cannot just copy paste solutions from one place to another that's for sure so we are approaching the end of our conversation and i always have one question i ask everyone and that's how you envision your preferred food future now you have the option to think utopistic or you can be also realistic So it's up, I leave it up to you but I'm very curious how you imagine our future. I I I believe that the 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 border between realistic and and uh, utopia it's for for the ones that work aim to societal uh, society transformation it's very narrow. <laughs> you can you yes. can look at it's 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 kind of blurry. It's maybe the almost the same thing and and what i envision is that technology will um the, the technology is already here the knowledge is already here but it must be even distributed distributed yes distribute it for the <laughs> for the portuguese speakers up around there uh, so i believe that working with this capacity of Uh, making the uh, to emerge uh, local and traditional knowledges and distributing this um 
innovation capacities and the technologies itself is the way that we'll have a food system that is more fair in the, all the in all the aspects from production to distribution and, the, and then you have a, because people relate that to oh there is mouth holders in a very arid region that the, this is the the relation that they do but it's this impacts also on how you buy your food and, and now in pandemia this is pretty much a in Brazil now we experienced the very uh, high uh, on the price the elevation on the price of food and this is also an aspect of this lack of um, competition or or access to 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 innovation from different types of agriculture and and so my, the future that I see it's where the, there is a lot of distribution of knowledge, innovation, and the capacity for people to to provide very good food and but also for people to buy uh, very yes. good food. Exactly, access. That's the key word: access to knowledge, innovation, and also food. Well, Gaston, I would like to live in your future. So let's keep up the good work uh, to achieve that. Thank you so much for joining me today. I uh, really hope we will stay in touch. For those who joined us a bit late, no worries. I will post the session immediately now on IGTV. So you will be able to listen to it from the beginning. And please stay tuned because we have the, our next conversation on Thursday at 10 a.m. Central European time with another graduate of the November bootcamp. So Gaston, thank you so much again. Have a lovely rest of your day. Thank you, Julia. You too. Bye-bye.